What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video on Hell Let Loose because there is some more updates that I think that I should share. So let's get into it. First, we're going to be starting with a telegram that was posted on their Discord, which says, Hi everyone, we are not far now from the much anticipated end of Q3, and we do have lots to share. We are very aware that we have been holding back on official announcements, and although this was a calculated decision, it has been excruciating for the team to keep an intentional lid on things. Thanks to everyone for the support and patience shown. We appreciate the hell out of it. Over the next Next week we will begin to update all of our channels and forms to inform the entire community from our backers to our thousands and thousands of followers and supporters of an impending special news bulletin further and more frequent updates are to come in the very near future we aim to be as open and transparent as ever i can't wait to lift the curtains and let hell loose cheers the black matter team and then they show off a picture from the hurricane forest and now i'm going to tell you the special news bulletin that they posted today from spono again hi everyone i know you all have been waiting for news and once again we thank you for being patient with us. So much has been happening behind the scenes at Black Matter since the conclusion of our closed alpha in May. Just when we think we can't get any busier, we manage to reach a new milestone or dev goal, and a new wave of testing and integrations begins. Read more here. And this is a link to the Hell Let Loose website. It starts off with saying end of quarter three update. We're excited to let you know that we're much further ahead in development than we ever expected at this time. And as a team, we had to decide whether we wanted to release incremental updates that would trickle out over a long period of time. We'll show you the full scope of what we finished all at once. We know that early access games have a terrible reputation not only for being unfinished, but often never finished. If you backed our Kickstarter, you'll know that we've been determined not to fall into that category, and if able, deliver something approaching a final product to as big an audience as possible. For us, that means being as close to feature complete as we can, but without forgetting optimization, bug fixing, and quality of life improvements. We know that a game must not only be fun, but playable too. I really like what he has to say about that, because a lot of these indie games that are in alpha or early access tend to be, they feel unfinished, but I mean, that's the point, right? I mean, that's basically what you signed up for. But anyways, a change to the timeline. The downside of this is that we will be delaying our beta weekends until later this year, 2018, with our early access launch taking place in Q2, of 2019. The key reason we moved our release date back is because we were faced with two options. We could release early with many components absent or untested and buggy, or later at a stage of feature completion, with polish and optimization to ensure a smooth and stable release. We always intended to use our beta weekend as a chance for us to focus on your feedback, specifically around the mixture of gameplay mechanics and the metagame. As we're almost feature complete, we want to test the full spectrum of mechanics and see how they work with one another, instead of us introducing completely untested features into the game. For example, releasing early would mean that you'd be able to crew tanks, but that you may not have had repair stations or mines to fix or destroy them. As we've developed each feature, we've realized that instead of being totally standalone, they resemble a spiderweb of interconnected dependencies. For example, after finishing the artillery, we realized that we'd also need to make sure the economy metagame behind the team resources was working as intended. Additionally, with the vast quantity of new features and content, we've become increasingly aware that testing is making an enormous part of our time due to the small size of the team. It was meant that in order to work fast and efficiently in development, that we've neglected our communications. As a result of this, we are currently looking into ways of effectively scaling our engagement with the community as we head towards release. That's an interesting choice of words that they're using here when they say scaling. I mean, they didn't say scaling back completely from communication, but they're saying scaling as in they're not going to be as active because they're working on the game, or at least that's how I'm interpreting this. Somebody else could read it and tell me otherwise. All right, let's move on. Underneath the text, there is a GIF of a German, I believe, holding an MG42. He's pulling out the tripod and he's mounting it on a what looks like a white block, and then he reloads, and then he unmounts it, and then he starts walking, and then he starts shooting, and then it's just rinse and repeat. All right, moving on. What's next? Gameplay video hashtag 2. We are currently putting the final touches on the new video to showcase some of all the new features that we've been working on. It's all in engine and in game. And you'll see that nearly every aspect of the title has been improved. Sound effects, visual effects, lighting, animation, mechanics user interface, heads up display, and the user experience. We're very excited to give you a small taste of what's to come. And then they show a picture of, I think, 
this is a tiger tank, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm just judging by the cannon here. It could also be a Sherman Easy 8. You know, I have to wonder how the tanks are going to be able to like move around because I don't think they're going to be able to go through buildings, especially with the engine that they're on. But I mean, it would be cool. Like, do they have specific pathways for them or what? I guess we'll find out when the beta comes out eventually. But uh, let's move on here. Close beta weekends. As we've had to delay our early access release, we'll be running beta weekends this year and next year. So you'll be able to jump in and experience all the new features. While our early access date has changed, US backers will still have many opportunities to jump into battle. Our main aim during this time is to make sure that the metagame is solid and that each feature contributes to your experience on the battlefield. As we get closer to early access release, we'll be focusing on optimization across three key areas, netcode, GPU, and CPU. While the game is already performing well on higher end systems, we're aiming to lower the minimum specs to allow more players to jump into the battlefield. Moving on, Backer Cosmetics. The way the cosmetics work in Hell Let Loose has always been one of the toughest design challenges. However, we feel that we found a good balance between customization and historical accuracy. In the coming weeks, we'll be showcasing the Backer Cosmetics Medic rewards. Damn it, I should have been a beggar. Shh. And allow you to vote as a community on which you would prefer for both uniforms and helmets. Community onboarding. Thank you to all the community leaders that have applied on our website. We have had close to a thousand community division applications submitted and have begun working through these. This may take some time due to the volume, but we're excited to engage in these conversations to make sure that we have a solid community foundation by early access. So what will we see in early access? We know you're all waiting to see what we're seeking to include in the early access. So we put together the following list. Proposed Early Access Feature List. Commander Roll. Including a healthy list of abilities tied to the metagame. All infantry, armor, and reconnaissance rolls, including flamethrower, with unique skins. Multi-crewed wheeled vehicles. Multi-crewed tracked vehicles. All vehicles are geared and performed near real-life equivalents. Artillery. Player controlled. Deployable anti-tank guns. Player controlled. Heavy weapon ballistic systems. Armor values, deflections, etc. Vehicle component damage with different effects. Resource metagame. Reworked tactical map. Foy, Hurtigan, St. Mary Dumont production quality optimized. Anti personnel and anti tank mines. Deployable machine guns. Rocket launchers. And then after this, they have a video that is a idle animation, I believe. Basically, the guy's standing there and he pulls out a cigarette and then he dumps it. So that's actually kind of cool because I think this is like the first game that's kind of like Squad and Postscriptum that actually has some kind of idle animation, which I don't know if it's an idle animation or if it's player activated, but either way, it's kind of cool. I think Squad is trying to do something like this too, but they haven't come out with anything like that yet. I've, I've seen I've seen like a preview of like a guy dancing, but um, that was a while ago, so I don't know where that's at. But anyways, moving on. Where to from here? The team has been smashing through development goals faster than expected. We're incredibly excited to start pulling back the curtains and showing you the full array of features that you'll experience both in our beta waves and also in early access. We didn't expect to be so far along in our feature completion, and we know that the edit time is going to be a crucial period of testing, bug fixing, planning, and preparation to make sure Hell at Loose has a solid foundation. And then they show off a picture of what looks like a pack gun. I'm not sure if that's American or German. I think that's German. I think it's a pack 40. I could be wrong. Let me know because uh, I'm sure you guys will. And that is the end of the Hell at Loose news. Now I'm going to be critical here because I know that a lot of people are going to be mad, understandably so, because they did not follow the script that they wrote for themselves. They did not follow the roadmap that was clearly written on their Kickstarter page for everyone to see. Now, I'm all for giving the developer more time to finish their game, you know, to make sure that it's working and it's playable, but they really should have been more open about it instead of going silent right after the alpha. They should have informed the backers that the time that they set for themselves was just too unrealistic, especially with all the goals that they reached for that set time frame. If they were more vocal, I think that more people would have been sympathetic to them because they are a tiny indie studio with big ambitions for their first game. That's how it should have gone down, but in reality, they didn't say anything after the alpha. And from what I heard, the mods that were in the server did a poor job of handling the people in the Discord. It wasn't until the backlash that the devs went on the defensive and said something, and since then have become more vocal. This just goes to show that Kickstarter games are more of a gamble than anything else, since you don't know if the game's going to be good or not. 
The devs at the very least are trying to reassure us that the game will be completed. Hopefully the devs will continue to impress despite the delays, as I am eager to see this game completed. And with that, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye